All right, let's put transient, um, let's put this compressor to use here. Right now I got my thug foot. I don't know why I called it thug foot, but uh, you know, I name them as they sound. Uh, and I, let me play it real quick. Now, if you, here's, here is uh, the sound with just going through just raw, you know, no, 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 nothing to it. Now, keep in mind, fam, you do want it to uh, have a, uh, you do want to have a good, uh, put like this, the better your microphone and the better your preamp, the better your sound source is going to come out. So the same thing that goes with your drum samples, the better your drum samples when you run it through your, your preamps and your compressors and things like that, the better quality sound you're going to get, of course. If you use an inferior drum sample and you run it through a really good preamp, it'll make it sound good. The compressor will make it sound good, but it won't sound as good as an already good quality sound and sample. A good quality sound and sample can make... Um, a compressor or like an envelope shaper can make a good sounding, really good sounding sample sound great, excellent. Uh, I'll put a little bit of EQ curve on it to, to roll off some high end here and some and to dip some frequencies that I kind of want dipped out. The reason why I wrote this high end out, if you listen to the sample real quick, briefly, you'll notice that uh, it's a hi hat in there. So I rolled that out so I can kind of get that because it's a really good quality sample, but the hi-hat was stuck in it. So that's how I rolled that frequency off of there. So anyway, listen to how this works. Now, no, and it, it, please excuse me if um, the volume or the uh, quality is not up to par. So I'm going to try my best to maybe I might push it a little louder so that you can actually hear what it's really doing. I can hear it right now with my speakers and my headphones, but I don't know how much compression and how much how much YouTube tears up sound. So I'll maybe post up an original sound so that you can hear, you can download it and hear the difference. But anyway, check out what the attack does here. Sorry. And as I increase the attack, you hear that? You should hear like a little knock. You hear that little knock? We pull it back a little. And you hear it's kind of muffled or warm. So that's what the attack does. It raises up that transient. Now what this sustain does is this. It can cut it. So it takes a lot of that body out. Or you can add a lot of that body back to it. See what happens? See how the floor... The entire body of the sample is sustained. Let me shut up so y'all can hear. All right, so I shut it up so y'all can hear. So hopefully you guys heard it. And this um, signal bias, of course, is the envelope. And let's listen to what this does here. So if you hear it, and I don't know if you actually can hear it, but this kind of tightens up. This tightens up the attack here. It tightens it up. It makes it uh, kind of uh, clean. It like cleans it up. And then when you push it down the fast, it allows a little bit more of that uh, ambience to come through. And then you can go over here to the end game. And you notice it really knocks it, it really brings up all of that everything that you did over here brings it up but you'll notice here now we got a little red peak distortion so a lot of times you can hit that saturation and it tones it down it makes it legal so you'll want to pull back maybe on output gain so you can still get all of that you can still get that knock and punch but you know you can make it sensible and then if you want, you can take all that compression and then you can mix in the original sound with it. So originally how I had this tweaked was like this. I wanted my signal bias here. 
because I wanted it clean and punchy. I had the sustain rolled out to like here, like so. Then I had my attack kicking, hitting a little harder. And that was fine for me. And put game maybe up a little. Now there's no rules when it comes to this. It's all it's all according to your taste, how you want it to sound. This is how I wanted mine to sound in this particular song. Now in the context of the mix with everything else, you hear this. Now, uh, I don't have this mixed, so excuse me for that. You know, I got the strings kind of going hot and a few things kind of all over the place. But even with the wild and, wild and crazy mix going on, a lot of things going on, you still hear the drums nice, clean, clear, and it's punching through. Now, again, if you can't hear it in this YouTube session here, Go download it. They give you 30 days for free. Download uh, Decam in shape, in shape, Envelope Shaper and uh, try it on one of your mixes and see what I'm talking about. Play around with it and you will be pleasantly happy. You'll be pleased with it and I guarantee you that. That is one of the ultimate secrets, fam, to how these homeboys and homegirls be getting their mixes and their drums punchy, banging, and slapping. It's your homie Grand Tizzle. And until the next time, oh, we're going to do a session. I'm going to tell you how we put this together here. Y'all may have noticed I put an orchestrated twist to it. That's all fun. It's all good. It's all love, baby. And if you want to know more about how to put together them type of chords and progressions, fam. Y'all already know what it is. Hip hop and session dot. I mean, hip hop chord progressions dot com. Sorry, same promotion. It's your homie Grand Tizzle, and I see y'all in a minute. I see y'all when I spin it. Mm -hmm.